Okay. <laughs> so I just dived in the dumpster again on the way home uh, from hanging out with some friends. And check it out. I don't know if you can see that or not. But I got a fucking Marshall amplifier in the dumpster just now. I got a guitar stand. I think it's half broken, but I just grabbed it for the hell of it. And I got this also got this uh, case, which looks like a, I don't know, a vintage, uh, I don't know, some kind of Japanese case or something maybe. We'll get a closer look when we get home, but oh my God, my heart's pounding. It's like four in the morning, so I, there's nobody out. So, you know, it's, I'm not worried about anybody stopping me, but it's just like, holy crap, a fucking Marshall. I died, I, sh I wish I'd gotten, video of it. I never get video of the shit in the dumpster, so everybody calls me a liar, but no, I'm not lying. Today's video is sponsored by Native Sons Goods, makers of the best woven guitar, bag, and camera straps on planet Earth. And now the best is even better with a new line of hand-woven Maya Serape straps with USA Organic Herringbone Hemp backing. Get 10% off when you use the link in the description, and remember when you support my sponsor, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. Okay, so I can barely believe this. So I've just gotten home and uh, I've gotten, this is my haul that I just got from the dumpster. And dude, you know, I apologize for the lighting and everything, but I'm just doing this kind of in the middle of the night because I was just out and, you know, I come home. But before I'm com I come home, I just stop off there just on the off chance, you know, there's something there. And sure enough, dude, <laughs> Dumpster is unlocked. This is what was in there. It's still wet. Here, I'm, I'll show you. It's still wet. I'll, I'm going to open this case here in a second. I'm going to set that aside. Uh, this thing is still wet. It's got, see, it's still got rain on it. And they don't even pull the cord off of it, you know. They don't even pull out the cord. Uh, they don't. They don't attempt to take the logo, you know, just in case some one of their employees needs a Marshall logo. I mean, how many times do you see one of those broken? And all of the knobs. I mean, come on, dude. This thing has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen freaking Marshall knobs. And they just throw them in the dumpster, and then the handle, you know, I mean, even all the hardware off this thing is worth saving, surely. I did pull out that stand right there, but it's broken on the top. I do have the other piece. I, I, did, I was able to find it. It was kind of sitting on top of some bags, and it's broken. But then I saw this. This was sitting on top, too, so I grab it. And it's got, it's got a uh, adapter. It's like a stereo adapter and a cable. I mean, it's a shitty cable, but it's still a cable. But yeah, this, I got this, and I was like, oh man, you know, I know there's nothing in it, because it's light. It's a light case. But, you know, I, I got it in here, and I opened it up, and look at this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's obviously, it's obviously, you know, seen better days, but I can fix that. And then this, this is a real leather strap. And look at this. Handmade in Nashville, Tennessee, Music City Strap Company. This is real leather, dudes. Look, it's a real leather strap. It's like lipstick red. It's a good goddamn strap, but they threw it away. Had some picks in there too, just rattling around, but why the hell? Would you not just grab that out and say, hey, I'm, you know what, I'm going to take that home with me. That's a cool strap. Why? It's absolutely insane. Hey, what's up, guys and gals? Brad the Guitologist here. In this video, I'm going to take a look at this thing. This is an MG uh, 100 HDFX that I just pulled from a dumpster. Yes, just pulled it from a dumpster. And uh, you can see here in my front seat of my car, driving down the road, bringing it home, I found a couple of other things in this same dumpster. 
And uh, this one was in there, and it looks to me like it's in pretty darn good shape. It did have some water, you know, like it had gotten a little bit wet because it's been really rainy here. But I'm just dying to know what's wrong with this thing, why it's screwed up. Because, um, I mean, it looks really, overall, it looks really great. I just now noticed that, actually. I really couldn't find anything else wrong with it, in fact. They even threw away the, the, the power cable with it. Just don't get it. But uh, like I said, it, it did get a little bit wet. There was a little bit of water back here on the back. Um, but it, once again, I mean, you could see just in really good shape. I mean, it's like brand new. You know, I know it's not brand new. I think it's this is a 2005. So it's an older amp. It's not, it's not a new amp. Uh, and oh, it's got a little scar right here too. Yeah, it's definitely not a new amp. And I just gotta know. I gotta know what's wrong with this thing. But yeah, before we really get into it, we'll look at the uh, specs of this thing too. Um, we've got emulated line out and headphones, so you could go directly into like a recorder. Uh, you could go, you know, whatever into your rack, what uh, mixing board, what have you. Uh, a CD in, so this could actually play. This is an auxiliary input. So you could uh, play stuff from another source. Um, FDD, I'm not sure what that is. Not 100% sure on that. Uh, we've got a master volume down here. We have an effects loop mix, reverb level, effects level, uh, preset adjust. And we have a couple of channels. We have a clean channel, of course, with a clean and crunch. It has its own gain as well. Uh, then we come over here to the overdrive channel, which has its own gain. We have two different types of overdrive. Uh, bass, middle, and treble, a contour, and a, another volume for that channel. So there's a gain and a volume for the drive channel in addition to the uh, master volume on the overall output. But yeah, it's got those digital effects. I think on the back, I, when, we just had it, when we just had it turned around to the back, I, I think I just saw effects loop back there um, yeah so this has an effects loop uh, it also is foot switchable we don't have the foot switch unfortunately and I don't even see very much dirt or anything on the fan it's not I mean it's not like this thing has like high hours or anything I don't believe unless somebody has cleaned that fan you know, it's got a little bit of dust, but it's not bad. It's also a little attenuator for the effects loop but yeah let's um, I'll tell you what I think I want to hook this to a speaker. Uh, put it on the Variac and see if we can just dial it up and see if it works sometime. I mean, maybe it'll just work All right, so so far it doesn't look like it's coming on at all so plan B let's open it up and see what's going on Well, I already do smell something it smells like something may be burned so that could actually be helpful and you know it's not a new amp and you could see that just by the cobwebs and stuff that are in here and that also probably means it hasn't been looked at very stringently by anybody if it still has cobwebs I didn't bother to even clean them out of course you know why would they I guess if they were just gonna throw it away my first real suspect here, obviously, is going to be the uh, transformer. Uh, the thing, ooh. Okay, so that that's missing a bolt on that transformer. I wonder if that's in here somewhere. Did I just hear it? All right. So obviously that nut is missing. So uh, and that spacer right there has been pushed out. So they may have had, they may have started to take that out, perhaps. That's odd because it doesn't look like these have been broken. See how these have a, up here? You see how they have a little bit of a kind of a seal on there? Like that tells you whether or not the that's been taken out before. This one does not look to have been broken because you would see like a you would see the seal on that broken. That's kind of one of the ways they would determine whether or not to honor a warranty or something like that if that seal had been broken and parts have been changed it does not look like at least these top two have been broken yeah that one's questionable it's hard to see that one but I don't think that one's been broken either but why this one over here would have been 
undone like that I'm not sure okay see obviously this is the fan this is the output but we we had a situation here where this wouldn't come on at all uh, oh we have a blown fuse blown fuse right there blown fuse now why would the fuse be blown you know of course we don't know uh, could be a number of things I suppose could be a bad transformer we could have a shorted capacitor somewhere uh, could be a bad solder joint on this board but look at that that's been moved also you see how that's been kind of moved down you got it there there but it's not it's not really centered on there so I kind of wonder if they took that out maybe didn't have the correct uh, fuse and just kind of said to hell with it and threw it away I don't know of course it also could be that there's something blown tell you what we will do let's go ahead and pull the board I want to get a look at the bottom of the board why not why the hell not so let's pull these knobs off of here and why they didn't do this before they threw it away I don't know I mean there's this is a ton of knobs I mean you might as well on something like this it seems like I mean especially it's a Marshall Marshall style knob you can use them I don't know hell I just I'm, I'm sick of trying to account for people I'm just sick of it takes two seconds to salvage some stuff what you can salvage off of something and then just throw the rest away if you don't believe it's worth your time you know some of the stuff could be worth your time though if you just took a second <clears throat> but some people don't I guess they don't have a second to take so I think I'm just gonna break them loose and then we'll do the rest by hand But certainly we can see that, you know, we've got a blown fuse. So there's something going on in the power supply for sure. I was gonna have to pull this board anyway just to ensure that all the, the solder joints were good. So we may as well just do that up front. Get up off of there. That's the only thing, man. Sometimes these are so hard to maneuver maneuver out because they're just barely able to fit in the first place if they just engineered this with a with just a fraction of an inch more room it would have been a little easier um, but what we want to pay special attention to over here is the uh, power s section of this board that's going to be most of the stuff over here I can't really say I see anything It all looks pretty good to me. It's funny too how, I mean, if you wanted to lift some fingerprints off this board, you really could get a good set of them because there's there's fingerprints. <laughs> Look at that. It's like a perfect fingerprint. There's some more down here that are like perfect. <laughs> it's almost like they were lifted by cops. Yeah, I don't see anything. I don't, solder wise, I don't see any problem. Yeah, that's the only thing I see burned right there a fuse. Let's pop a fuse in it and see what happens. Okay, I don't have a 3.15 amp, but I do have a 4 amp, so I'm going to try this. Alright, let's dial her up, see what she does. Whoa, okay. Smoke! Ha ha! Yes! Fantastic. <laughs> okay so we have a bad output on this for sure I mean that's obviously burned but at least that means that the uh, power transformer is good we're getting power if that board right there is not burned too badly we might be able to just replace that uh, transistor the output transistor there could come out okay on this if we want to let's pull that and see what we're looking at alright so let's look at what we got here we've got it looks like some bad solder right there for sure look at that it looks like there might be some a bad solder joint right there and I mean of course this thing's gonna be burned up now because it's you know it's obviously it's obviously burned up now I mean because look at that yep 
I'd say what happened probably is somebody plugged this thing in without really having a load on it and it just uh, it just it, you know it just couldn't handle it for whatever reason this particular design just can't handle that just burn it up so yeah I think we will I think we'll try to order that part right there and see if we can't get this thing going I, that's probably gonna fix it um, yeah, why the hell not? Let's order that part and see if we can't get this thing going. Okay, so I was able to find a schematic for this thing, and according to the schematic, it should be a TDA 7293. Yeah, it's impossible to see on the actual part because it's burned. I'll put one of those on order, and uh, we'll change it out and see what happens. 3,000 years later. Okay, so I got the new part in for this thing and uh, we're gonna go ahead and replace it real quick and see if that was the problem so we'll go ahead and pull it off this board I think what I want to do probably is try to cut that out of there first and then we'll, we'll get rid of the leads after the fact so yeah yeah the board was definitely singed So I don't know. So that pad right there had come loose. So I'm going to have to make sure that we have good continuity between that pad and wherever down the line it connects to. All right. We just stuck a little bit of. A little bit of flux on there to help out when we put get this on. All right, let's check out our new part and compare it to the old part. TDA 7293. This one's made in Singapore. And look at that thing was cracked. So that's definitely, or it might have cracked whenever I broke it off there, but still, nonetheless, you know, it was weak if it cracked. Look how hot it had gotten. Here's the replacement. Definitely looks a lot better. I think this one's Chinese made, but I, it should be uh, should be a good part. Hopefully, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I think at this point we're just ready to fire it up and see what it does. Um, we've only replaced two parts, and we're talking about just a couple bucks spent. So yeah, so this part ended up costing me three dollars and seventeen cents after tax. So. That was, uh, and it got here pretty quickly as well, so can't complain about that. Well, the light's on. It has power. I've got sound at the output. I'll try to put a guitar in it. I've just got 85 volts, or, uh, yeah, 85 volts on the input, and it's running really, it's running really, really low amps, so. That's what I've got going on the input. 8.4 watts, I mean, at 85 volts. I guess I could go ahead and dial it up, but I, I want to get a uh, guitar in it first and just kind of see what it does, see how it reacts. doesn't seem to be working but I wonder if that's switchable we'll take a look at that
Well, point is, it does work. Uh, we have to obviously see what's going on with the effects. I wonder what it what is going on with the effects. Why aren't they working? Let's see. I wonder if they might have come unplugged from the board here or something. Or are they on a switch? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Oh, there it went again. Oh, shit. Okay, well, fun while it lasted, right? I knew I should have ordered two of those. I, I thought about getting two of those things just for the hell of it, because I thought, well, if it burned once, it'll probably burn again. And uh, it would make sense to go ahead and grab a second one, to consider how cheap it was. Okay, so a part of me wanted to just give up after that first failure there because I'd already waited on that part and then I just smoked that second uh, output chip. So uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, do some more tests on this. I'm going to probably pull each and every one of these little capacitors down here and test those individually because I suspect it's probably one of those that's shorted. Um, I can tell you that without that plugged in, this thing is stable it's on and working just fine see right there um, and it's working as a preamp I've got uh, headphones plugged in and I can get sound and this thing works fine as a preamp so we've definitely got the problem on the output board and I believe it's probably one of those little capacitors that was shorted that was taking that out so it took my second one out along with that first one but yeah just to verify that we're not you know we're not getting a massive over voltage or anything like that I tested the first few pins on this connector pin 1 is 43 volts pin 2 is 43 pin 3 is 43 pin 4 is negative 43 pin 5 is negative 43 and pin 6 is negative 43 and while the schematic doesn't give me the voltages uh, on this particular page, I'm pretty sure that that's not over voltage. Uh, we can at least see here what we're looking at. We do have uh, one, two, three positive voltages coming in on the power rail, three negative voltages coming in. Uh, here are our three output connectors here. We have two power ground connectors on five and six. And those grounds are separated from the... Uh, separated from the power rail up here by by these capacitors so we, there's one of the capa capacitors there's another one c2 c3 if any of these are shorted then you, obviously you could see what would happen it would just uh you know all that power would basically just go directly to ground but it could also be that could also be that uh one of these other components like this one here is, could be shorted as well the C5 uh, so yeah I think what the thing to do here would be to pull each one of these capacitors one at a time and just test them out of circuit uh, make sure that they're all good um, if they're not good, just go ahead and replace them, or if they're questionable, go ahead and replace them. Test all of this, the uh, test all of the paths to make sure we got continuity on all of these traces, uh, because I did have at least one of the pads that was uh, coming off the up off the board. So um, it's you know I did test that as well, and it does have continuity to the other points in the circuit. So I don't think that was a problem, but you know I can double check that too. Just to make sure but yeah i'm not going to give up on this i'm going to order that part again and uh, we'll see what we can do to this maybe we could salvage it maybe not but i'm thinking uh if nothing else the problem is definitely on this uh, output board right here because like i said the power coming in here is uh 43 volts positive 43 volts negative and i don't think that's excessive so uh so yeah we're going to be looking pretty much squarely right here it's one of these components probably one of these capacitors all right, so the uh, the pad that was worn, that was coming off, I think was this one. 
And this is the area of the board that was getting hot the first time around on this side. I think the second time I was seeing smoke coming from over here. But the first time at least it was coming from here. And there's a the C5 capacitor is right here. So I'm going to pull this C5 out. Uh, and we'll see what this one looks like. Okay, I think I figured out what's wrong with this board. If we go from the... Okay, so these first three right here are the uh, positive voltage. So I'm going to stick it one of my leads here. Okay, so we'll just make sure that's continuous. and It is. Okay, so this all tests continuous right there on that pad. We've got... We're good there. Oh, it also... We get uh, positive voltage on this pad here. We also get positive voltage here. And the thing is, um, here's what I found. If I put my lead right next to it on this pad, look at that. I had 50K there for a second. 55K. 50K. You see that? That should not be 50K. There should be nothing there because if we look at this, this is... Um, one, two, three, four pads over. One, two, three, four. And the only thing it's connected to, it is connected to a lead that's going over here to this pad, but nowhere else. So what that tells me is there is a connection of 50K resistance from this trace right here to this pad right here so this board has been cooked the board is conductive and that's probably why the thing burned it probably uh, it just cooked over time and got hot and just became conductive anytime you have a voltage present and you have a resistance you're gonna have a voltage drop and a voltage drop means wattage and wattage means heat and heat means you know it probably got more and more and more conductive and it just eventually uh, just fried itself we've got a bad board so we're gonna have to either buy this board uh, or probably just recreate it and that's probably what I'll do is just recreate that board because uh, it should be fairly simple to do there aren't even that many components I removed a couple of the components already to test it out to make sure we weren't getting we, we didn't have anything that could possibly uh, you know uh, be in the circuit other than just that trace so that is, we've established that that board right there is conductive. We only have a one, two, three, four more parts to take off, plus this little ribbon cable. So we'll probably just extract those parts, extract the ribbon, ribbon cable, and just reconstruct this board on another blank board. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and also order, reorder this part because I had to I burned it and had to cut it back off of there. So we'll reorder that part, build the board, and hopefully we'll have a working amplifier after that much 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 later okay I finally got the chip in for this Marshall I was kind of skeptical about even touching the package considering what all is going on right now but I've got this installed uh, took quite a bit of wiring as you can see it's <laughs> it's not the prettiest thing in the world but it should uh, should do the trick so let's get this installed on the amp and see if this does it. I mean, if it if this one burns up now after doing putting all this work in, I'm probably just going to write this thing off. So, <laughs> let's see what it does. Okay, moment of truth. You guys, uh, you guys want to see this thing smoke? Pay special attention to the board. I know I've got a lot of extra compound I need to wipe off. I'll get that in a little bit, but uh, just uh, watch back here, and we'll see if we start to see smoke. So, in three, two, one. Oh, hit it here. Three, two, one. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, that certainly didn't sound good. Let's pop it back out and see what's up with that. Man, this is becoming more trouble than it's worth. Okay, so pretty much all I, all I can do at this point is try to double check that I did not hook something up backwards so I'm gonna go by the schematic for the board 
and double check it. I actually built the board based on a combination of the schematic, but I mostly looked at the old board because you can clearly see all the traces on the old board. So I went by the traces on the old board to build this new one, and it was just kind of the easier way to do it in my estimation. So I need to go back and double check it with the schematic that I found online. And also I'm going to check and make sure that I didn't re somehow reverse the pins. Like, so I've got them, you know, backwards. Cause that would really suck if they were backwards. Okay. So I sat and traced this out for a little while and I found the problem and it's a, it's a miswire. Can you spot it? <laughs> it's this wire right here. Uh, that goes to these two connections. Uh, instead of going to this side, uh, there's a capacitor under here that goes from here to here. Instead of going to this side of the capacitor, this line should have gone to this side of that capacitor. Hopefully we didn't burn anything up and we'll, we'll try it again. Okay, so here's the moment of truth again. And let's, uh, let's flip this thing on and see what she does. In three, two, one. And pay attention to that that output chip because that sh could start frying any second. I don't think so though because uh, from all my testing, I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty confident it was the board that was conductive, which isn't that interesting because this is yet another model of Marshall amplifier that we can identify. Where the board, the board itself, has become conductive. Now this is a green board, kind of like the other, um, the J, uh, the not the JCM, excuse me, but the, yeah, the JCM 2000s, the DSLs and TSLs. Some of those models had conductive boards, and I think it was around the same time that this one came out, and it was the green boards that were conductive in those. So I believe we've identified yet another flaw in a Marshall lamp from this time period and and once again this is um, this just kinda goes to show you how you sorta have to watch out for some of these products that you're buying man some of these you know some of these new products made in China you just don't know what kind of components you're getting or what quality the components are but I can already tell this thing is gonna work let's uh, let's give it a little bit of a test
All right, guys, that'll do it for this dumpster picked Marshall amplifier. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, hit subscribe down below. And for now, we'll see y'all later. <laughs>